Uh, okay, hi. Uh, welcome to the core dev team for JavaScript Weekly Sync, September the 10th, 2018. Uh, it's very nice to see you. Um, uh, pff, how are we all doing? Everyone is smiling and thumbs up. Awesome. It's really nice to see some of you. You've been away and um, I missed you. <laughs> okay, let's get on with it. Stop talking, Alan. Um, so uh, what do we normally do? We do normally do a weekly update. So that is uh, where we all talk about what we have done and what we are blocked on and what we're going to do this week. So um, I'll go first. So this week, uh, I managed to publish a release candidate for JS IPFS uh, 0.32, which is coming out soon. I'm on the uh, final launch sequence for JS IPFS 0.32. I am just updating all the, pro uh, the big projects that are using IPFS uh, and running their tests to make sure it's all, it's all working. So, um, and that's looking good so far. Um, so what else have we, have we been doing? Uh, I were, the tests were um, getting unstable again, so I did a pull request to kind of hopefully shore things up a little bit. Um, the, 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 yeah, I, so I noticed that when you're using the CLI and there's no daemon running, um, Node was uh, requiring the whole of IPFS when it really didn't need to because um, it only needs to use the API to talk to the daemon. Um, so I sent a pull request to address that, make, make things faster for when you're using a, a C, uh, the CLI. Um, and uh, made a whole bunch of fixes to the API docs as part of the release. And what else? Yeah, so I'm, I'm working in the background on adding uh, or making CID version 1 the default and CID base to be base 32 the default. Um, for IPFS in JS IPFS, and um, I've made some progress on that. Uh, blocked, yeah, right. So my relationship status with Jenkins is complicated, and uh, I have been uh, been running into the npm uh, like npm erroring out um, because it can't install stuff quite often. Um, lots of workers out of space and things like that. So that's been frustrating me. Um, along with the, the tests uh, not passing. So yeah, uh, there are issues for that. I'm hoping um, Victor might be able to look into them or, or, or someone else. Um, so my so this week I will be releasing JS IPFS 032. I will be finishing off the PR for CAID base option, which I actually have sent that PR. Um, and then, so once that's there, the next step is to basically get, create some interrupt tests to check that um, when you request content by a CID that's different to the CID that it was added with, the block store can still retrieve it. Um, so then, so that's that. And then once I've done that, actually implement that, that functionality in the block store. Um, but that's for like future releases, um, and that's that's me. Uh, any questions? Okay. Oh, go on. Actually, go on. I have kind of a comment, a question, comment. Um, I'll take a look at. I want to take a look at that pull request, but I just wanted to show you this. Uh, Victor was having these issues over the last month, and so I started to investigate and try to dig into exactly what was going on. Uh, and I have a little write-up here that I'm going to expand on, but it goes into kind of what tests are, are failing, when they're failing, what platforms they're failing on, um, and has some, some raw data, data in there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of look at what tests you fixed and, and what tests showed up here, and kind of curious how much they're gonna match up. Awesome, that, that's the raw data, I love it. That's great, <laughs> uh, very cool. Yeah, I mean, I I think there's there's a combination of things at play here. Like the what's what's really frustrating for me is that the the well, I know that, that there are problems with the tests um, and that they they are relying on timeouts being executed in certain orders and things like that. Um, and I'm trying as best I can to eradicate those issues. Um, but it's when it's when things that are outside of my control, like uh, NPM, like us not being able to NPM install, failing a pipeline, um, is is really frustrating. And then I know that it would we could 
it, it would be possible to make the test run a whole lot faster if only we could split the pipeline out into multi, even more stages. Um, but I, I know that there's an issue with Jenkins that means that we can't do that. So that's also frustrating. Um, so yeah, like it, it would be really great to get the tests at least um, working. Um, but yeah, the outer space errors and the NPM stuff, I know that there must be a fix for that that, that just needs to be done. Um, and that would, that would make me super, super happy. Uh, but very, very cool on, um, uh, on the kind of investigation into the, the tests that um, I will take a look at your, um, your comment. Right, okay, let's move on. Um, who, oh, I've lost my window, where's it gone? There we go, who's next? Uh, so Alex, what's up? Hi, uh, so I spun up a registry, an NPM registry at registry.js.ipfs.io. Um, so that's cool, you can use that to install uh, your NPM dependencies via um, IPFS, I mean, sort of via IPFS, because it will uh, basically proxy for NPM. If it doesn't have it in its local repo, it will go off and get it and put it in its local repo. Um, so then the idea is that the different nodes can cross talk and get the, the dependencies from each other, uh, which is nice. So you can, you can use that right now. Uh, if you just use uh, dash dash registry equals HTTPS kernel slash dash registry dot JES dot IPFS dot IO, uh, you can use that right now to, to install dependencies. So that's quite cool. Um, which might even help Jenkins a little bit uh, if the problem really is between Jenkins and, and NPM. Um, yeah, so also, so we, we disabled the pub sub tests on the interop repo because then um, they were they were failing all over the place. So I uh, refactored them a little bit to make them more stable and that seems to have helped quite a lot. Um, I noticed that the pin tests were timing out quite a lot on Jenkins and running them locally, they were super slow. So I increased the, the timeouts for the, the, the uh, pin tests as well. That seems to have you know, helped as well. Um, and I picked up the work on writing a consolidated HTTP API for IPFS. So that's kind of taking our existing uh, HTTP API uh, and making it a bit more restful so that we can do things like use existing tooling to, to talk to our APIs and you know, just generally make them a bit more consumable by people who aren't deeply embedded in, in the IPFS ecosystem. Um, so there's a there's a repo in the shipyard for that. Um, I like any feedback any people have. There's a few open issues that are discussion points about things that we could probably get rid of because there's a lot of redundancy in the API and there's lots of things that have been not deprecated and they've been superseded by other things and the old stuff's never really been removed. So it would be nice to not have to carry any of that legacy baggage forward. Um, I'm also aware that it's an incredibly disruptive thing to do. Uh, so, you know, I question my sanity every day as to whether or not it's a, actually a good idea because there's a, there's a lot of work um, and I don't know. Yeah, so it'd be nice to hear if people are like, yay, this is a good idea or what the hell are you doing? You're crazy. Uh, so that'd be quite cool. Um, so I'm blocked on a few things. So the NPM on IPFS uh, thing is currently just storing all the uh, packages downloading on the Docker containers that it's running. Which obviously is going to make the machine run out of spade background at the moment. Just if, you, if there's a cache miss, it goes and it gets a package because otherwise it would just run out of disk space. So I'd really like some from the infrastructure team to create an S3 bucket for me to use the um, S3 backend for IPFS for the Docker images. So there's, a, there's an infrastructure issue that's been open for a few days on that. Uh, that would be helpful. I created a, uh, quickly, there's another, there's a, a PR for adding one-time password support to Azure, because um, now everyone should have one-time password on their NPM account and Azure doesn't support it. Um, so I added a PR to add support. So it'd be really nice if that could get merged, because otherwise you have to like do a manual NPM publish after Azure has done its thing, you know, like an animal. It'd be nice to just have the tool do the do. Um, and the final thing that I did was, is, Quite contentious, I think. So, because I've been uh, trying to do implementations and trying to make sure that things are the same. And something I noticed was for the keys, uh, our implementation requires passwords for everything, and the Go implementation requires passwords for nothing, um, which kind of means that they're not the same and it makes it impossible to write an interrupt task for them. So, I created a 
PR that removes, that just sets a default password. And I'm not convinced that's a good idea, uh, but it does make it the same. Um, I think, yeah, Vasco replied and tried to get the Go team and the, the JS team in on the conversation so that we can come to some kind of agreement as to which is the best way to do it. We should have that conversation uh, so that we are in line with each other. Anyway, so yeah, so I'm going to continue with the HTTP API. Uh, that'll be me for the rest of the week. Any questions? Uh, I, oh, sorry, who was that? Oh, that's oh. Me. okay. Um, so the, yeah, I don't know if that was a conscious effort on the JS team to not to use passwords for everything. Um, but uh, maybe David might be able to help when, when he gets back. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the, the consolidated HTTP API, um, it would be rad. So I had a really quick, quick look at the repo. It would be really cool if we could get some documents for like what that new API is, so that I can or anyone can see the diff of what like what what's different um, and why. Um, uh, so that's not really a question. That's more of a request. <laughs> so the so if you clone the repo and start the server. And you get an interactive uh, documentation page that shows you everything, and you can make requests to it. No. Okay. Great. Like in terms of actually having a diff between the two, there's no common format, so that would be. Rough. Although I guess you could, you know, you could write the old API in the like the open API spec, and that would give you a diff. It's going to be all green and all red. Yeah. Uh, I guess I can use my eyes and brain to <laughs> see. Uh, but yeah, cool. Um, nice. I don't have any. Oh, uh, just the registry thing. Presumably, I can put that flag in like my npm config or something, so that it just uses it all the time. Is that a good idea? Yeah, until it's not. Cool. Okay. Um, any other questions for Alex? Okay, moving on. I like it when it tells me I'm muted. Uh, the, who have we got? We've got Jacob next, please. So I did a demo of the delegated routing work um, in the IPF all hands meeting. So that's that's pretty much working. Um, Go is just not live yet. So I'm just running that locally. So that will be a blocker on that. Um, but it's working. Um, so I've started working on the state machine work more with that, I have basic state machine logic for libpw switch, but I'm working on the connection upgrades um, and making that whole, every libpw switch connection a, a state machine in itself. So making just making sure that I can, I'm supporting them as is, and then also I've been scouring through a lot of the open issues around the board with libp2p connections um, and hoping to address some of those with this update as well. Um, so I'll be working on that this week and then hopefully we'll be able to transition onto the libp2p um, state machine itself. Um, there is an issue with libp2p TCP transports that's not currently able to dial over DNS. Um, so I've been looking into that. It looks like the um, multi-format library doesn't have that registered as being an option right now. So I'm looking at adding that in and then what else is needed with the TCP library changes to make that work. And that is it for me. Any questions for Jacob? Cool, thank you. Uh, moving on to Vasco. Hello. Uh, so last week I worked mainly on my OKR for IPNS over PubSub. I created a new module called the GS Data Store PubSub, uh, which aims to be like uh, an abstraction for the put and get function, similar to the local data store and the DHT, in order to be easy for us from the GS IPFS side just put uh, uh, an IPNS record and it spreads all over the data stores. Uh, 
uh, it was already reviewed by Jacob and I have to now fix the review and uh, hopefully release it. Then I also added some features to GSIPNS for also this OKR and uh, my implementation, the main implementation in GSIPFS is almost done. Uh, it's more uh, uh, tests left and some refactors. So uh, in the middle of this week, I hope to get it to, to the PR. Uh, I also fixed a small bug for the Liberty records for IPNS as well. Uh, blocked, uh, I'm uh, currently ex uh, waiting for the next uh, IP IPFS release for getting the interrupt tests for I IPNS. Hopefully it will need the release and uh, everything will get green. So it will need to just uh, to be reviewed. And then for the IPNS over PubStat part, I have two uh, PRs open, one for interface IPFS score and one for IPFS API that uh, I would uh, really like to be reviewed and uh, released sooner because uh, it will be needed at least for the, my GS IPFS PR to also get screened when it will be created. Uh, so for this week, I went to fix the Jacobs code review for GSIP Store Pub Sub, uh, add the, the remaining tests for GSIPFS implementation, and create the PR for having IPNS over Pub Sub, uh, and uh, fix all the PR feedback that I have this week, and uh, create also the interrupt tests for uh, this IPNS over Pub Sub. Lastly, I would like also to start this week. Uh, uh, some tests for the DHT interop to check the state of it uh, so that in the next week I can have a more precise uh, prediction about uh, how long will it take to fix the DHT interop. And uh, that's all for me. Any questions? Cool, thank you. Um, I'll try and unblock you on the IPNS over Pub Sub stuff. Uh, if there's no uh, more questions, Hugo, uh, can we have your update, please? Sure. Hi, guys. So I basically continued the work I was doing uh, the other week. Uh, by now, the two, for those that weren't here, uh, basically I'm fixing the ad over the HTTP API. Um, in two ways, basically I added uh, support for chunks, uploads, or ads, and also fixed the non-chunk uh, ads. The topo requests are basically working pretty well. Uh, right now I just need to add some more tests and ask uh, more feedback from you guys. I've been working on these two pull requests with Lido. We've been iterating in a couple of stuff, uh, but right now I think uh, the two pull requests are in a good place to start uh, opening up for more feedback from you. So if you please can go there and uh, give your opinion, I would appreciate it. Uh, and for this week, I'll try to finish the, the tests and all the feedback you guys are going to give, hopefully. Um, and also, I need to fix the stream HTTP package. Uh, that's the one that was like screwing everything on the when you try to add big files. Uh, and also, there's another issue related to the, this package, so I'm trying. I'm going to try to fix both things and add this the, to the big to the big big data tests uh, repo. This new way to add stuff chunk. So that's what I'm going to try to do this week. If anyone has any questions, please. Nope. Cool. Okay, uh, we are running out of time, so um, if you can be as quickly as you can, uh, Travis. Yeah, so I have a demo uh, in, the, in the notes there if anyone wants to take a look. Uh, but 
skip over that. Uh, next, right now, I'm going to be working on um, getting the browser plugin. I'm going to merge that this week and start working on uh, the actual interop tests uh, so we can actually have a way to, you know, test Go IPFS, JS IPFS, and browser IPFS uh, using IPTB and the, those plugins. And so I'm going to kind of like work through what that kind of looks like, um, how we want those to run. Cool. Thank you. I'll take a look at that demo. Uh, that sounds that sounds amazing. Um, any questions really quickly for Travis? No. Okay, cool. Uh, then it's just Volker. Hi, uh, I've been out for two weeks in Tanzania uh, at a geo conference. Um, yeah, I think I got quite a few people excited about IPFS. Um, sadly, my talk was recorded, so my plan is to record it at home again to spread the word because like, it's kind of like geo related. So basically, the geo people get an idea about IPFS because if I currently point them to the website, they have no clue what their use case would be. So I hope my talks clears this up. And then I will focus on graph sync because I haven't really done anything yet, and I still have to finish the prototype in this quarter. So that's the goal. So it's graph sync, graph sync, graph sync for the, till the end of the quarter. <laughs> all right, that's all. Perfect, thank you. Um, does anyone have any general questions or comments or things to say uh, before we wrap this up? Go for it. Uh, I forgot that. Uh, if anyone has a recommendation to do my uh, screen recording on uh, Linux, I would be happy to hear it. which tools might be good. All right. OK. If we're all done, we're all done with five minutes to spare, and we might not get kicked off like we did last time. <laughs> Um, thank you very much everybody for your updates and I will see you next week for another exciting round of IPFS chat to each other. Hooray! Bye!